Emergency Contact by Mary H.K. Choi was a highly anticipated 2018 release that came out to polarizing reviews. The plot of this book, if you aren't aware, centers around Penny and Sam, you can see on the cover here. Penny is a new college freshman who is just starting her school experience, and Sam is a dropout <laughs> that is kind of a little bit lost in life. The two meet under strange circumstances and exchange phone numbers and become each other's emergency contact and form a relationship, a friendship, over text message. I initially listened to this book on audiobook from my library when it first came out, and I really liked it. It reminded me a lot of Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell, which is one of my favorite books. It has a lot of similarities in it. The main character is a freshman, she's taking creative writing classes, she's, you know, figuring out life with the help of a boy. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities there, but the characters in this book are a lot grumpier and therefore a lot easier for me to relate to. Because I love this book so much, I was really confused by all of the negative reviews that it was getting when I went to go review it and seeing other people's opinions. They were criticizing the writing style, saying that it was confusing and nonsensical at points. Uh, but worse than that, people really rip into the main character, Penny saying that, you know, it's one thing for a character to have flaws, like everybody wants to have a character with flaws, but Penny is downright unlikable, which was very baffling to me. So recently I purchased this physical copy of the novel because after listening to the audiobook, I knew that I would want to have a physical copy of it so I could revisit it. And I have recently reread it, and reading the physical copy, I did start to see some of the writing style quirks that were bothering other people. So Choi doesn't always denote who is speaking with a name in dialogue. So sometimes you have to go back and figure out who is speaking in a, a big line of dialogue. So that is something that takes you out of the narrative and I can understand the criticism there. There are also some clunky descriptions. Uh, at one point, a character is being described as having three-quarter length sleeves, and then later in that same scene, uh, that character is described as lifting his arm, and you could see his armpit. <laughs> Which is something that an editor definitely should have caught. If somebody is wearing three-quarter length sleeves, you can't see any of their upper arm. I'm sorry, you can't. <laughs> So rereading the physical copy, I definitely acknowledge those things. You don't ever want the writing style to take you out of the narrative and remind you that you're reading a book. You want to be completely sucked in. The dialogue is not an issue for the audiobook. The narrators of the audiobook do a really good job with the recording, so you're never confused as to who is speaking. So if you want to stop watching this review and go read this book right now, if you can get your hands on, or rather your ears on the audiobook, <laughs> I suggest that format over the physical copy. So with the writing criticisms acknowledged and out of the way, I would like to take some time to discuss the low ratings based on the main character being unlikable. Let's Let's examine this. I don't have a solid conclusion here. Maybe I will by the end of this video. I just want to discuss this notion of an unlikable female character. Full disclosure, I loved Penny. She's my kind of person. <laughs> but I can't deny that she is extremely judgmental and makes a lot of bad decisions over the course of the book. So we're getting into some mild spoilers here, fair warning, but it is revealed later in the book that she experienced some trauma when she was a young teenager. And she has been carrying around the effects of that trauma with her ever since. And that trauma has resulted in her being closed off and distrustful of other people. Towards the end of the book, she starts to acknowledge that she has been misdirecting a lot of that anger as a result of that trauma towards her mother and really blaming her mom for said trauma. And I got the sense that had that trauma not happened to her, she would have probably just been annoyed by her mom like most teenagers tend to be. The whole point of the book to me was to show her growth and her healing process and how she learns to let other people in and forgive other people and not be so quick to judge 
after she lets Sam into her life and works through their, you know, emotional state together. She starts off the book very judgmental and mistrusting everybody, but she does not end the book in the same place. So that's why I give these overly negative reviews the side eye when I read them when they claim that they didn't like the book because of the unlikable main character. Now if the book rubbed you the wrong way, fine. You can like what you like. I'm not here to criticize that. But it does bring up a question to me. Do we judge young female characters, young female women, too harshly in our society? So let's look at some comparative examples in popular culture, shall we? Exhibit A, Ferris Bueller. Do you have a kiss for daddy? Are you kidding? He is a terrible human being. He manipulates everyone around him and learns absolutely nothing by the end of his movie. I mean, just look, look at how he treats his best friend, Cameron. Where's your brain? Why'd you kick Where's me? Where's your brain? Why'd you kick me? Where's your brain? I asked you first. But do we say that Ferris Bueller's Day Off is a terrible movie because he makes bad decisions? Exhibit B, The Men of Marvel. Drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Please let us consider Thor, Iron Man, and Peter Quill in their first movies. Do we say that Guardians of the Galaxy is a terrible movie because Peter Quill starts off as a self-centered numbskull who literally kicks small animals out of his way. Exhibit C, Scott Pilgrim. Scott, you are the salt of the earth. Oh, thanks. I meant scum of the earth. Thanks. Scott Pilgrim is an idiotic man baby who lies and cheats his way through life. Does he learn by the end of it? Sure. But man, he makes a lot of terrible decisions along the way. Is Scott here? Uh, you know what? He just left. And Exhibit D, Sherlock. There's nothing wrong with me. Sherlock is a dick. There is nothing wrong with me, do you understand? But okay, let's look at a female example. If you have spent any time on booktube, you will be familiar with the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And you may be aware that Evelyn Hugo makes a lot of very questionable decisions over the course of her life. And I would say that she's not a very likable character. But I have yet to see a negative review about Evelyn Hugo at all. And I have yet to see someone rate the book low because she makes bad decisions and she, at many points in the book, is a pretty despicable human being. I suspect, theory, that the differing opinions of the characters in these two books lie heavily in how the narrative is laid out. We learn of Evelyn's struggles very early in the novel. We go into it knowing that she is a person who Hollywood is basically set against, and she's going to do everything that she can in order to succeed in Hollywood. So we may judge Evelyn less harshly than Penny, because up front we know that she is doing what she has to do to survive in old Hollywood, whereas Penny, it takes us almost the whole book, the whole plot of the book, to get to the point where we understand her motivations. I have a feeling I know what some people may say about this, is that sure, all of these characters that I talked about act in similar ways, but the writing style is better, or their stories are crafted better. And I will be the first to admit that there are some writing style road bumps in emergency contact. And like I said, I don't really have a conclusion here. I'm not leading up to a thesis statement. I just kind of want to put these examples out there and get you know, everybody thinking about them. Let me know down in the comments if you have any opinions about this. As always, thank you so much for watching this video, and until my next video, happy reading, nerds. Ow. <laughs> Jesus.